Ah, speaking of YouTube, you, Dylan Brooks. <laughs> oh, man. We're going to be chilling, Brooks, right now, man. Dylan Brooks was cut from the Memphis Grizzlies, figuratively speaking and literally speaking, because of what happened and the reports that are coming from Memphis. Let's talk through this. Let's get the beats out there. Oh, what a postseason for my man Dylan Brooks, they wrote. He entered as the longest tenured member of the number two seed in the Western Conference Memphis Grizzlies. But he exits it and he leaves as the butt of a lot of jokes because of his unfortunate trash talk. Interesting writing here. It got worse when they informed Brooks, an unrestricted free agent this offseason, that, quote, he will not be brought back under any circumstances, according to Shams sources. Godly. Now, despite all the backlash, we know who he is as a player. He's a good defender, averaged 14 points this year. And when he hits his threes, okay, he's valuable in this league. But boy, did he get exposed in that Lakers series, and that's what we're going to talk about. It's going to be interesting to see if he lands in the NBA and where he lands in the NBA. I think cooler heads will prevail once he gets through this little phase of everybody over there memeing him out and over there trying to just troll him up. He'll get a landing spot somewhere in the NBA. But boy, let's start here. How he was cut for show, for example. This is how this went down. Because you don't let these type of reports out. You don't say these things to anyone unless you're trying to send a message. Not to just Dylan Brooks, but to this young Memphis Grizzlies team of, hey, we need to lock in because Dylan Brooks talking trash locked in the Los Angeles Lakers. Yeah, that actually happened. Let me tell you how it goes in practice because in practice, the preparation is the separation. So, Bulletin board material, we've all heard about it. I'm not a big believer in it, but I do know it has an effect. Here's the effect. You talking trash about LeBron James. You know that LeBron James doesn't like to punch down in the moment at least. Now he's passive aggressive and he'll wait till it's all done as he did in this situation. But in the moment, oh, he's going to keep it all class as much as possible. But that doesn't mean everybody else on the team will. So in practice, once they hear Dylan Brooks is coming at the king, trying to poke the bear, oh, all them cubs, oh, they're going to rally for big dog. They're going to rally for the big bear. So everyone gets locked in. Now, in a normal practice session, no matter what it is, it's impossible for adults and certainly for the kids I coach to stay locked in the entire two hours. Whatever it is. That's why every time you watch guys practice, you see them just in slow-mo, they laughing, they jogging. Some of them got their phone on them, right? Ben Simmons, like cats. It's just, it's impossible to lock in. But you get locked in in intensity per drill, right? But when you got somebody poking the bear, your leader, all of a sudden, everything gets amplified, intensified, and guys focus more, not perfectly, but more than they normally would. So what happens? You get this collective effort that is greater than it would have been if you didn't say nothing for whatever reason. The, the seventh guy, the eighth guy on the team who normally goes at this pace, which is a damn good pace, all of a sudden takes it up a notch because he heard somebody's coming for him. That's how it goes. Now, Dylan Brooks was sold out also by his teammates. Let me tell you why. Because in this situation, if you're the Memphis Grizzlies, you're reading the room. You're taking the pulse of your team. You maybe even directly go to John ja Morant or another leader on the team and say, hey, what's up with Dylan? How's it going with Dylan? And some guys may have said, you know what? I ain't going to lie to you, coach. What he's given us and what he's taken away from us, uh, I think there's more being lost than gained. That could have happened, or more importantly, the coach is just reading it, and guys will talk through their actions. The, most of the communication is nonverbal. You just start to watch guys and see the chemistry and see how it's off, and all of a sudden, there's no more appreciation for the guy. Because what Dylan Brooks got called out for, trash talking and trying to come at LeBron, that's his gift, and that's his curse, right? So I think Dylan Brooks in this situation, because obviously they underwhelmed 
Obviously, they didn't live up to expectations. And you can blame a little of this on the focus or the trash talk. All of that said, Dylan Brooks, to me, was sent a message and his team was sent a message that we are not going to allow this anymore. It's time to grow up. It's time to mature. And for you, Dylan, it's time for you to do both of those things somewhere else.